Jackie Silebi was born on 7 March 1915 in Soweto, a township in the south of Johannesburg. He was the National Commissioner of the South African Police Service starting from January 2000 to January 2008, when he was charged with corruption and put on extended leave. He was also a former president of African National Congress Youth League, South African Ambassador to the United Nations from 1995 to 1998, and the president of Interpol from 2004 to 2008. He obtained a bachelor degree from the University of the North and in the 1980s taught history at various schools. He spent time in exile in the Soviet Union and in Tanzania where he taught at the Solomon Masang Freedom College and was a representative of the left-wing World Federation Democratic Youth from 1983 to 1987. In 1987, while in exile in Zambia, Jackie was elected to the ANC National Executive Committee as the head of the ANC Youth League. In 1991, with the ANC making preparations for the end of apartheid, he was put in position to organizing the repatriation of ANC exiles. In 1993, he was appointed director of the ANC's Department of Welfare. An anti-apartheid activist in his youth, Silebi was a member of the ANC and a political ally to former President Thabo Mbeki, and Mbeki would later defend him in public. Being that Jackie was a member of the ANC, he was detained by the apartheid police at least twice for his anti-apartheid activities. He is one of the ANC top officials to be subject to criminal corruption charges in a long list of many. In the first democratic elections of 1994, Silebi was elected as a member of parliament. From 1995 to 1998, he served as the South African ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva. He also chaired the 1997 Oslo Conference on an international total ban on anti-personal landmines, at which the Ottawa Treaty was concluded. From 1998 to 1999, he was Director General of the Department of Foreign Affairs in President Nelson Mandela's government. In 2000, newly elected President Thabo Mbeki appointed him as National Commissioner of the South African Police Service. In 2002, while SEPS Commissioner, Silebi was named Vice President of Interpol. In 2004, he became his first African President, paving the way for generations to come. By the late 2006, Silebi was known to be under investigation by the Scorpions for corruption. Tabumbeki, who was president at the time, has since said the Scorpions' investigation into Silebi spawned out of the investigation into the 2005 murder of mining magnate Brad Cable. The investigation, amongst other things, scrutinized Silebi's relationship with Glenn Agliotti, who in 2006 pleaded guilty to drug smuggling and was charged with Brad Cable's murder but was later acquitted in November 2010. Atliotti called Silebi from the scene of Brad Cable's murder and much media attention was given to the extent of their friendship and the extent of Silebi's knowledge of Atliotti's criminal activities. Silebi infamously said of Atliotti, the day after Atliotti's arrest for murder, he is my friend, Finnish and Clark, and that's that. Many South Africans were left in disbelief as to how a national commissioner can be friends with a known criminal without crossing the line. Because police were involved in this, I became directly involved because everybody who complains about police complains to me. The unlikely duo's relationship came to public scrutiny in 2006 when the Scorpions, the now disbanded crime fighting unit, started investigating Celebi for corruption, fraud, racketeering, and defeating the ends of justice. Central to these charges was his clandestine association with Agliotti. Prosecutors presented compelling evidence that Agliotti had been paying Silebi substantial sums of money suspected to be bribes. Bank records, cell phone communication and testimonies from various witnesses all indicated a dubious financial relationship between the pair. Agliotti himself confessed to making payments to Silebi initially defending them as loans or gifts between friends. In September 2007, arrest and search warrants were issued against Silebi and then withdrawn. Shortly afterwards, Mbeki suspended the director of public prosecutions, Vusi Pikoli. Silebi was known as a close ally of Mbeki and Mbeki had defended him in the media, 
some accusing Becky of protecting Silebi from dismissal and prosecution, a charge which he denied strenuously in a 2016 newsletter. We just want to know whether you have seen the warrants uh, for Jackie Silebi. <laughs> you can't be serious. In January 2008, the chief prosecutor in the case, Gerinel of the Scorpions, was arrested at his home, apparently for unrelated charges. The charges against Nell were quickly dropped. Speaking at the Mohoro Commission in 2019, Willie Hofmeyer of the National Prosecuting Agency, NPA, said that Nell's arrest had been calculated to delay Silebi's prosecution and was part of a broader conspiracy to protect Silebi. In the same week, the NPA announced that they intended to charge Silebi with corruption, fraud, money laundering and racketeering. Silebi approached the Pretoria High Court, asking the court to block the state from laying charges against him for corruption. In order to deal with the allegations against him, he resigned from Interpol and went on extended leave from his SEP's position. On 31 January 2008, he made his first appearance at the Rheinberg Regional Court where he was charged with three counts of corruption and one count of defeating the ends of justice. The trial began on 5 October 2009 after several delays, with Nell acting as a chief prosecutor. The prosecution maintained that Silebi had accepted bribes and gifts from Brad Cable, Glenna Cliotti and businessman Mula Conrad Rutenberg. In exchange, Silebi had allegedly provided information about police investigations and preferential police treatment. Agliotti, who testified as part of an agreement that he would not be prosecuted for related offenses, said in court that he had paid Silebi over 1.2 million in bribes. He claimed that he, Silebi and their partners, had gone shopping together in Sentin City with Agliotti paying for the clothes they bought. He also claimed to have bought Silebi's wife a 10,000 red patent Louis Vuitton handbag for her birthday to keep Jackie happy and within reach. Silebi denied the charges and pleaded not guilty. He claimed that the charges against him were part of a political conspiracy, driven in particular by a former member of the Scorpions, and that evidence against him had been fabricated by Piccoli and Bulelani Nguka of the NPA, both of whom he implicated in corruption activities of their own. He said in court, I quote, The trial involved a malicious prosecution and an attempt to discredit me. Nell of the prosecution was also accused of corruption during the trial. You can't have a national commission of police sitting there at the top who's having an association with crooks and criminals like Glenn Atliotti. Jackie Sili was found guilty of corruption on the 2nd of July 2010. Judge Mayer of the Johannesburg High Court said that the prosecution had proven beyond reasonable doubt that Jackie Silebi had accepted money in exchange for favors for his so-called friends. He said that Jackie had furthermore shown complete contempt for the truth and a low moral fiber, including by falsely accusing a witness of lying during the trial. Jackie Silebi was found not guilty on the further charge of defeating the ends of justice. On the 3rd of August 2010, Silebi was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. In the sentencing hearing, the judge said that Silebi had shown no remorse, had lied in court, and was an embarrassment to all right-thinking citizens of South Africa. He was released on bail of 20,000 pending an appeal application. The Supreme Court of Appeal upheld his conviction on 2nd December 2011. In December 2011, he reportedly collapsed in his home after learning that his final appeal had been rejected and was hospitalized. When he began serving his prison sentence later that month, he was moved immediately to the hospital ward after serving fewer than 250 days of his sentence. He was granted medical parole in July 2012 on the grounds that he had end-stage renal failure. He was released to his home in Waterkloof, Gauteng, where he remained under supervision and where he reportedly received dialysis several times daily. He died in hospital in Pretoria on 23 January 2015 at the age of 64. Leaving behind his wife, Enisi Lebi was a nurse and two children. Jackie Silebi as a police commissioner, his integrity should have been beyond reproach. 
Instead, his fall tarnished the reputation of the South African Police Service and highlighted the significant issue of trust within the country's justice system, which is still a serious issue till this day. Rest in peace, Jackie Silebe.